So I think that with how close it is to Iowa, you know, everyone's really worried. Tensions are high and we are trying to do whatever we can to make a last ditch effort to convince some of Joe Biden's supporters to flip and support Bernie Sanders because this individual is weak against Donald Trump. And uh, Zephyr Teachout made that case in an op-ed for The Guardian where she points out how corrupt Joe Biden is and why that makes him weak against Donald Trump. Because Donald Trump weaponized said corruption and he will beat Joe Biden over the head with it in the same way he did to Hillary Clinton. And guess what? It's a believable case because it's true. So what Zephyr highlights is three instances where Joe Biden is just brazenly corrupt. First and foremost is all the favors that he did for the credit card industry while he took their money. The second is how he's crafting policies that keep the current for-profit health insurance companies in place while letting them host fundraisers on his behalf. And the third is how he's allowing fossil fuel executives to host fundraisers on his behalf while maintaining that he is going to do something about climate change. Look, all of this is corrupting. We're not talking about a quid pro quo, but what we're talking about is, you know, a system where you are allowing special interests that you are theoretically going to be regulating if you become president to help you get into positions of power. They're doing a favor for you. So do you honestly expect us to believe that you're going to actually hold them accountable when they helped you get to that position? Of course not. But the thing is that we've become so accustomed to this type of legalized bribes in America that it's just, it's not something that anyone even thinks about any longer. It's normalized. Nobody even questions it. So when the left actually points out the corruption of Republicans and corporate Democrats, well, centrists utterly lose their mind. So everything that Zephyr Teachout said in that op-ed is 100% correct. And it really blew up once uh, David Sirota, who is the speechwriter for Bernie Sanders, shared it in his daily newsletter titled The Burn Notice, which I am subscribed to. I absolutely enjoy it. Thoroughly, I would recommend that you subscribe to us to it as well. But um, he shared this out uh, in an email, and then centrists decided to feign outrage. You had Paul Krugman suggest on Twitter that this is really what makes Democrats distrust Bernie Sanders. Never mind the corruption that makes us distrust Democrats. Pointing out the corruption is what makes them distrust us. Do you understand how everything has been turned on its head? I mean, it's just it's it's laughable. It's laughable at this point, right? The argument that they're making. But what I want to talk about is the response from Bernie Sanders people, because I don't believe he did the correct thing here in responding. Rather than making the case as to why Joe Biden is corrupt, not only did he say Joe Biden is not corrupt, but he apologized. So basically, I think that Bernie Sanders had the worst possible response here. Take a look. Zephyr is doing a great job for us in She's a wonderful surrogate, but on this issue, I strongly disagree. Look, Joe Biden is a friend of mine. I've known him for many, many years. He's a very decent guy. And Joe and I have strong disagreements on a number of issues, and we'll argue those disagreements out. Uh, but it is absolutely not my view that Joe is, is corrupt in any way. Uh, and I'm sorry that that uh, op-ed appeared to me. No, this is not the right move. Look, I can see that when Hillary Clinton you know, attacks you. I see the value in you just kind of letting that roll off your shoulders because she doesn't matter. Joe Biden is your primary opponent and you have to make a really strong case against him and you have to call out one of his weaknesses because you have to make the case that you are more electable than him because electability is one of his strengths. And I don't believe he's electable, but voters view him as electable. So you have to disprove that in showing that he is in fact corrupt because guess what? He's corrupt. But what you just did is gave him a gigantic pass that he does not deserve. We should all be focusing and fixating really on Joe Biden's corruption because he has a history of being openly corrupt, doing favors for his donors, and Bernie Sanders just let him get away scot-free. No. Not only does this make Bernie Sanders look weak, but it hurts him. He's going up against Joe Biden Make your case against Joe Biden. Make the case for yourself. Make the case that you're not taking money from special interests. And that's why you're going to be better to represent people. Like, Bernie Sanders wouldn't be raising money 
by not taking Super PAC money and just doing this via small grassroots contributors if he didn't think that those donations from special interests were corrupting. So first and foremost, I don't believe Bernie Sanders believes this. And second of all, it's just bad strategically speaking. Like, stand your ground, Bernie. So when I saw this, it really frustrated me because Bernie Sanders is just a genuinely nice person. And he may be nice to a fault where it actually hurts him because this is a primary. So Joe Biden, of course, responded to this because he just was exonerated when he shouldn't have been. And he said, thanks for acknowledging this, Bernie. These kinds of attacks have no place in this primary. Let's all keep our focus on making Donald Trump a one term president. These kind of attacks have no place in a primary. Imagine calling out some of the negative aspects that will make you weak against Donald Trump. That has no place in this primary. It's incredibly, incredibly frustrating because what I've been advocating for months, especially, you know, on that debate stage is for Bernie Sanders to go all in and, you know, call out Joe Biden's corruption. And he won't even let surrogates do it. It's incredibly disappointing. And voters, you know, if data tells us anything, they absolutely value strength. In candidates. It's why Kamala Harris got that boost after the first debate when she went after Joe Biden hard because she looked strong. She was decisive. So, I mean, it just makes no sense to me why Bernie Sanders is letting Joe Biden off scot free. Do not let him off. He is corrupt. And look, we shouldn't have to rely on candidates to make this case entirely because it's just a fact that Joe Biden is the errand boy of elites, right? And the media should be calling him out. In fact, the media in 2008 actually did hold Joe Biden somewhat accountable. After Obama announced that he chose Joe Biden as the VP, the media did call attention to all of the things that Joe Biden did that benefited the credit card industry when there was this massive conflict of interest. For example, look at this clip from Meet the Press with Tom Brokaw calling out Joe Biden's corruption to his face. Those of his son, Hunter, who is 38 years old, and that's a reference to uh, your son being hired right out of law school by a big company here in uh, Delaware that is in the credit card business, MBNA. They, he got about $100,000 a year, as I recall. Uh, you received $214,000 in campaign contributions from the company and from its employees. Uh, at the same time, you were fighting for a bankruptcy bill that uh, MBNA really wanted to get passed through the Senate, making it much tougher for everyone to file bankruptcy. Uh, Senator Obama was opposed to the bill. Among other things, uh, you couldn't, in fact, claim that you had a problem because of big medical bills. Uh, you voted against uh, an amendment that would call uh, for a warning on predatory lending. Um, you also called for, a, um, you opposed efforts to strengthen the protection of people in bankruptcy. This has been an issue that you've heard about before. Uh, your son was working for the company at the, at the same time. In retrospect, wasn't it inappropriate for someone like you in the middle of all of this to have your son collecting money from this big credit card company while you were on the floor protecting its interest? Absolutely not. My son graduated from Yale Law School. The starting salary in Wall Street was $140,000 a year if he went to lawyer. Options he had. He came home to work for a bank. Surprise, surprise. Wow, I can't believe that Tom Brokaw would attack Joe Biden by pointing out the very obvious fact that he's corrupt to the core. So, I mean, that's what we saw in 2008. But now when you point out said corruption, the media runs interference for Joe Biden. Case in point. What Joe Biden's Are you record he's has corrupt been. corrupt on Social Security? No, what I'm saying is that repeatedly over the past 40 years of his career, he has had no hesitation to make efforts to cut Social Security, to raise the retirement age. what about age. the corruption and this is a problem? Conversation. What, about, what about saying he has a corruption problem? I think that how you characterize that is, is up to the voter, and that's fine for them to decide. But what's important is for us to have a conversation I'm, on I'm TV, sorry. I'm not about conflict between what, what candidates. What does that mean to let the voter decide about a corruption problem? Because this, your speechwriter is promoting this op-ed that's written by a surrogate that says Bernie, Joe Biden has a corruption problem. And I'm just not, a, is, that, is that a campaign sanctioned thing? Does the campaign believe that Joe Biden has a corruption problem? 
What the article describe, is describing is the fact that Joe Biden has made deals with Republicans repeatedly over the course is of his corrupt? career in order to cut Social Security and to raise the retirement but is that age. Corrupt? And if and if someone wants to describe that that is corrupt, that is up to them. But what I am saying right now is that instead of trying to instigate disputes between candidates on I'm not semantics, instigating it. It was written. In, it was written in the Guardian and promoted well, by your speechwriter. That's it's not fair me. I'm just asking you about it. The answer is yes. He is corrupt, and we shouldn't have to be educating the media about Joe Biden's corruption. The media should be educating voters about his corruption. If you don't want to call it corrupt explicitly. Fine, don't use that word, but point out all of the campaign contributions that he has taken from special interests. Call out how he's doing all of these fundraisers with billionaires and elites in the Hamptons. Point out how after taking money from the industry, he has done favors for credit card companies. He's made it more difficult for us to file bankruptcy because he's doing their bidding, probably because he took their money. I mean, connect the dots, people. So, I mean, look... <sighs> This is so frustrating to me. Bernie is not going about this the right way. He's being incredibly weak here, and I think foolishly so. Do I think that overall this will hurt Bernie Sanders? I don't necessarily know, but I, I can't see this helping him. By giving Joe Biden a pass, you are essentially legitimizing his corruption, Bernie, and you can't do that because we know you know that he's corrupt. Otherwise, you wouldn't be touting the value of not taking billionaire donations and raising money through small grassroots donations. So it's just incredibly frustrating. Bernie has got to once and for all be strong. And I have no doubt in my mind that he would be strong against Donald Trump. But you have to prove to voters that that would be the case. And being weak, just like bowing your head and getting cucked by Joe Biden, isn't going to prove to them that you're going to be strong against Donald Trump. If anything, you're showing voters that Joe Biden is strong because he got you to back down by basically having stooges in the media whine about him being called corrupt when it's a fucking fact. So, I mean, it's, it's frustrating. I want Bernie Sanders to call him out. I want him to explicitly say Joe Biden is corrupt because he is. But I mean, Joe, uh, Bernie Sanders is just, he's, he's a nice person and he's too nice. And um, I, I just hope that it doesn't backfire, hope that it doesn't hurt him. And I hope that this strategy that he's choosing to utilize helps him in the long term. I really do, because the reason why I'm disappointed in Bernie Sanders right now in the way that he handled this is because I just can't see how it does help him. But I hope I'm proven wrong and I hope he wins because no other Democrat will suffice. Their milquetoast neoliberal capitalist policies it's not going to save the planet. It's not going to save the country. So Bernie's our last hope. And I just wish that he would start acting like it in times like this and call out his opponents who are only running because they're opportunists who want power, who don't actually care about helping normal Americans. And I'll leave that there. I just hope Bernie's right. But um, I don't agree with this strategy.